these AI news are lit. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? I want to show you some of the hottest news in AI in this week, but also talk about stuff that is new in AI and I haven't covered it yet on my channel. Before we get started, some of you ask in comments, dude, why are you holding your microphone in your hand? Well, the reason for that is I thought it's a little bit more dynamic, but also I wanted to show you some cool, funny shirt prints that I like. So I have to be bigger in the shot. The thing is the camera is mounted on my screen screen and the table doesn't quite reach my belly so there is just air here in front of me and I kind of have to hold the microphone. I know it's a low-tech solution for that it's kind of stupid but it works for now so let's get started with the news. The big 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 release of OpenAI and that is the new O1 Pro model. As you can see here with these graphs, it has a huge improvement. And this is only the comparison to the O1 preview model. So not even the 4O model. But when we go here to this graph, you can see the comparison to the GPT 4O model. And there you see some huge improvements in, for example, the competition for math. It's really, really strong in the PhD level science questions. It's a little bit less strong, but still very significant improvement. And when we have a look down here on these different benchmarks, you can also see comparisons where sometimes it's a lot and sometimes it's not at all. For example, the AP English language exams, same score for both of these models. In this case, again, the comparison between GPT 4.0 and the O1 improvement in other areas, for example, chemistry, it has a huge improvement. So that's pretty interesting. However, one thing that kind of stands out to me here is the MMLU benchmark comparison where we have GPT 4.0 at 88.0 and the O1 improvement at 92.3. Now, if you're wondering what is this MMLU, it's the Measuring Massive Multitask Language Understanding Benchmark. That is quite a mouthful and probably one of the best tests for these LLM models. However, however, if we look on two different pages, we have here GPT 4.0 with an 88.7 score. And on this page, also OpenAI GPT 4.0 or Opus with 88.7. So either they made a little bit of a typo here or they just want to have the distance look a little bit bigger in their marketing. And by the way, one more thing, if we go over to the Google blog and we have here the Chamonix Ultra model, it is here rated MMLU with 90%, which is also pretty interesting. And if you think, hell yes, I'm gonna get that. Well, if you wanna have unlimited access, you have to shell out $200 per month. But for that, you get access to the O1, the O1 Mini, the GPT 4.0 and the O1 Pro. It might be worth it for you if you want to have this as your virtual assistant. Personally, I've got to say, I'm not going to shell out $200 per month to use an LLM because I'm not using LLMs that much, but it might be good for you. Let's spend 10 seconds talking about Genie 2 because I have a full video on that, but not many people cared about it, even though I thought it's one of the best news of the week. This is an AI created by Google that can create a video game from a single screenshot. And I found that pretty amazing. Check out their blog post or my video. Next, I want to talk about flow state. And this can be defined as AI for the super lazy or the people who want to brainstorm with AI. I see it pretty positive because it's a fun tool to use. And what it actually means is you write one prompt and then you get basically an endless stream of different styles and different images. And it looks like this. So you can see up here, we have a pretty small prompt, a cozy library full of books with an open window showing the night sky. And then below that, we have all kinds of different styles, artistically, different kind of perspective, different kind of light moods down here. You can see there's nothing and now there is something. So it's rendering while you're scrolling. It's extending for you. So here it is growing and growing more and more styles. If you find anything you like, for example, you say, hey, this image here is pretty cool. You can save it. You can download it. You can upscale it. You can do even more stuff here. Generate motion, edit in canvas, use images, guidance, remove the background. Um, 
yeah, a lot of these are coming soon, but technically you can do that. And you can also have more like this. And this also shows you what kind of filters have been used or LoRa's have been used to create this specific image. So for every image, this is going to be a little bit different. And of course, this can also help you to dive deeper into how to use Leonardo. So it's actually a pretty cool tool. The Hunyan video model is out. And as you can see behind me, it can give you some pretty insane results. The cool thing here is that you can actually run this model on your computer. There is even a ComViewi workflow for that. The model itself has a size of around 25 gigabytes, but you can run it with 16 gigabytes of VRAM on a 3090, for example. According to these comments on Reddit, you can run it on a 3090 with 129 frames, 30 steps with a resolution of 512 by 320 in 11 minutes. If you have only eight steps, it will run in three minutes. And as you can see down here, if you have 20 steps, it takes around six minutes to run that on the 3090. If you go over to GitHub, you can find a workflow by KeyChat that he has figured out. And there's also a description, there's videos down here that show you how that works and also a description on how to download the models and where to put them. However, if you don't want to use ComViewi, you can also find it over on Fall AI. They have massively improved how fast that model is running. So they increased the speed by four to five times. And here you only have to enter the prompt and then you pay for the use of the GPU. Now they say for a video, they charge about 40 cents. Of course, this kind of depends on how long that video is. So for that, you would get around two to three videos out of one dollar. On top of that, you can also run other models on Fall AI that I haven't covered on my channel yet. For example, Mochi can be run here. I didn't cover it because I personally didn't really like the quality. But if you experiment, you can get some pretty nice results out of that, as you can see here in this preview video. But you can also run, for example, the Kling videos, which gives you some pretty nice results. This looks very similar to what we've seen with the Sora model, even with the Sora model leak. And you can also run LTX video. Now I have covered that on my channel and here you can run it without any kind of installation. There is no preview right now, but you can check out my video on how to run that locally on your computer inside of ComfyUI. Next, I want to show you this amazing project by Daniel Berkey. Not sure if I pronounced that name right. And what he's doing is he's using Gemini to catalog everything in his home. So he's walking with his smartphone through his home, about 10 minute walk, filming everything in there. And then Gemini is automatically categorizing and identifying all these kind of objects and then putting them into a database, which is pretty amazing. Next, let's check out this research by ByteDance for image to video control. This can do camera movement, it can do object control, and it can also do motion brush. So this example, we see here a character animation with the astronaut coming towards the camera or with the guy turning his head towards the camera. In the next example, we can see object motion where the balls are moving apart from the original image. And then we have also this boat moving forward and look at the nice water animation also that is included or addition to the boat movement. In this case here, you can see actual camera movement. So you have some tilting, you have some panning of the camera, beautiful animation. And of course, the image is extended to the side to invent new parts of the image. And here we have examples of both of that happening at the same time. The jellyfish is swimming upwards and the camera is tracking the jellyfish, extending the video image to the side. And with the hawk, I'm not quite sure how they're called right now, the camera is moving backwards while he is crawling towards the camera. Pretty beautiful shot. Also, I will link all of that and more examples below my video. Let's check out a new keyframing prototype by Runway, where you have the different frames or keyframes on a canvas. You can move them around and create forks from these keyframes to create alternative versions of that. 
I'm not quite sure I'm 100% understanding of what is happening here, but it is a very nice visual way to have more control over how you want the video to play out. So basically you can be a director, have a sort of storyboard where you have visual confirmation and visual interaction on how you want to progress over time with your video. And this looks like it is amazing and really useful. As always, I'm super excited about all of these AI developments. That's just who I am. But let me know in the comments what you think about that stuff. I think this is another spark, another glimpse into our future. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye. I'm not just here to play. I'm not just here to a beat drops hard and start to flow. Words come up fast like a rapid show. I paint pictures